Welcome. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Time for the word. For the word of God is living and active. Sharper than any two-edged sword. The Bible says, If you abide in me, and my word abides in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Ministering today is our regional pastor, anointed woman of God, an author, a church planter, visionary leader. God has planted a word for you in her heart. Now, let's sit back and remove all distractions. Tune in and be ready to receive the word that will change your life for good. With excitement, let's make welcome Pastor Fumi Obilana. Good morning and welcome or wherever you are watching us from all over the world, whatever time of the day it is where you are, a very, very good day to you and a very, very blessed Sunday. We are delighted to have you join us from wherever and um, we just thank God for you. And today I'm celebrating you. I'm celebrating myself. I'm celebrating you because here we are in the second half of the year. The Lord has been faithful. The Lord has been good. The Lord has kept you and I. And we just want to truly, truly bless his holy name. That he has pulled us through. And the one who has pulled us through even to this moment, the one who has carried us into the second half of the year, that same God, even our God, will carry us to the end of this year and to a joyful, peaceful end of our lives. And so I welcome you once more to today's service. And I have a word for you. I have a word for America. Because again today, America celebrates its independence. 244 years of independence. It's been a journey. And it's a journey that has still not ended. The Declaration of Independence said very clearly what this nation was going to be about. It was about the right to life, to liberty, to pursuit of happiness, knowing, convinced beyond all shadow of a doubt that all men are born equal or created equal. They are created. Talks about a creator then. So there's a creator who created everyone equal. That is the basis of this republic. So we want to thank God for how far he has brought this nation. And we know that we must not rest on our oars because this nation still has a long, 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 long way to go to fulfill what God created this nation to be. So get ready because today I'm going to be talking to us about what America should be building with. America needs to build with gold. We must build with gold. We cannot build anyhow. We cannot build with anything. We must build with care. We must build with diligence. We must build with integrity. And we must build with materials that will endure. 
material that does not rust. We must build with gold. Our Bible passage today talks of a man, a man who loved God, a man who was passionate about God, but a man who was strongly, very, very wrong in his convictions. You can be very, very passionate and very, very wrong. Paul said, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful by putting me into the ministry. He said, I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. He said, I obtained mercy. My prayer for everyone under the sound of my voice today is that by the end of this service, we will thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and we will have obtained mercy from him. I want you to look at this man's, um, this man's resume. A blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man, and like every human being, he forgot to add the word a murderer. Because that was what he was. We are talking about Paul, the apostle. He called himself a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man. He forgot to add the word murderer. Why do I say he was also a murderer? Because the Bible does not record that he physically put his hand to kill anyone. But the Bible records that he stood by when someone else was being murdered. How many times do we stand by as people are murdered before our eyes? How many times do we stand by as people are gunned down before our eyes? He did not only stand by. We are told that the people who stoned Stephen took off their cloaks, took off their outer garments, their outer clothing, and threw it at his feet so that nothing will disturb them from stoning Stephen. That's why I say he was the murderer. But he obtained mercy. He said, I thank Christ Jesus. He said, I obtained mercy. And when we go to First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 9 First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 9 this man said an update to his resume I am the least of the apostles I'm not worthy to be called an apostle. I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God today, I am what I am. His grace towards me was not in vain. I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. This man received the grace and mercy of God and went back to the people he had persecuted and the people he had joined with, others that he had joined others, joined others to murder, to now preach the gospel of Jesus to them after he had received the mercy 
through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus. America, God has been good. God has been good to you. Looking back into the history of this nation and all the things that this nation did in the past, the Native Americans who were killed, the Black Americans who were brought here as slaves, who continue to be treated like slaves. Immigrant communities who have come here and are being oppressed and repressed. It's time, like Paul, To begin to say, I received the grace of God. The grace of God has built one of the greatest nations, probably the greatest nation on earth. America is the greatest nation. I pray that it will return back to being the greatest nation on earth. If from today we begin to build with gold. America is a kaleidoscope of colors. It's a nation that was built by black and white, red and yellow, brown and all the colors in between. America is a nation of many nations. America is God's way of giving us a pretext of heaven. America is that nation where everyone comes in. including the people we call the founding fathers. This was not their original country. There were people living in this land before they came. They met people in this land. They came to this land. This land opened up to them and received them. They brought other people to this land. Whichever way we came, whether we were here before as Native Americans, or we crossed the sea because of religious persecution or we were brought in later in horrible conditions on ships as slaves or after the slave period we came from all over the world to this land that God has helped to become a land flowing with milk and honey. Whichever way we all came, America is a kaleidoscope of colors. It was built by everyone. Black, white, red, Yellow, brown, and 
any other color in between that you can think of. As I said, America is supposed to give us a foretaste or a, or a future or a picture of the future. Revelation 7, verse 9 to 10. Revelation 7, 9 to 10. John the Beloved said, his eyes being opened and God giving him a revelation of what? Of, of heaven. He saw into heaven. And he said, I saw, after these things I looked and behold, a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues. All nations from every nation. No one could count them. From every nation, tribes, and peoples, and tongues. Standing before the throne of the Lamb, clothed in white robes. This is what heaven is going to be. So if somebody does not like someone of another skin color on this side of eternity, what, what are you going to, what do you want to do in heaven? Because heaven is for every nation. All tribes. All tongues. Let's build with gold. America. A kaleidoscope of colors. Built by people of different colors. People of different colors built by people of different colors. The train systems, the houses of the, the houses of Congress, the city halls, the White House. Built by people of different colors. Most of the time, black people. These are the people who have built America. I drove by Philadelphia City Hall yesterday morning. I drove through the streets of Philadelphia saw all the structures in center city, the old structures. Many of the people who built them are black. America was built by people of different colors. It is time for us to rebuild. Because that which was built was structures. It is now time for us to build a nation. A true nation. A nation of safety, of dignity, of respect, of prosperity for all. A blessed nation. It's time to build. And like we built the White House, like we built the City Halls, like we built all the other big structures that needed human labor, physical labor, we must now build a nation together. Blacks, white, red, and all the color, colors in between. Today is a new season in America. 
Whatever we do in this season will determine whether America will be gold, whether America will fulfill its destiny, whether America will be all that God called her to be, or America will become like other empires of the world, forgotten. I said earlier on, America is, I don't want to use the word was, the greatest nation on the earth. There has never been a nation like America. Don't let America become history. Don't let other nations take over. Don't let us fail God. America, let's build with gold. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate. This is the time where we all must hate racism. And we all must love each other because we are created in the image of God. No one superior to the other. It's the time to build a nation. God didn't bring the black man to America as a beast of burden. He brought him here as a joint heir and a co-builder. Wherever you may have come from. If you are in America today. For the Native Americans. And the founding fathers. And the black Americans. We are here together. As co-builders. And as joint heirs of this nation. It's time to build. It's time to build and to build with gold. Where do we start from? So much has been damaged. Trust has broken down. Disillusionment. Frustration. Anger. Bitterness. But we can start afresh. We can start afresh. First and foremost, shift your guns. Shift your swords. Put those guns away. Put them away. Put the guns away. There's no other country in the world that carries guns the way America carries guns. And America is the least safe of them all. There are nations where people don't have Hundreds of guns in their homes. And they are safe. What is wrong with America? Let us start afresh. We say we, it's a constitutional right to carry arms. What about the fundamental human right? God gave human beings to live without the fear of somebody taking their life. You have the right to carry a gun. Somebody has a right to live. Where do we start from? Let's pull down every wall of separation. Let's start a discourse of full reconciliation. It's time to reconcile. It's time to sit together at a table and talk. We can't continue to sweep things under the carpet. Don't mind people with big mouths who go about making noise. Empty barrels make the most noise. When a barrel begins to make noise, you know there's nothing inside of it. A barrel that is full feels secure. A barrel that is full stays in its place. 
A barrel that is full stands knowing what it contains. The empty barrel just continues to make noise. Let's have a discourse of sanity and intelligence. America is made up of smart people. Smart people. Black, white, red. They are smart people because they are endowed with God's intellect. Why are we going to act like fools? Pull down every wall of separation. Start a discourse of full reconciliation. For he himself is our peace. Who made both groups into one. He broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. And he reconciled them both in one body to God through the cross. And put to death the enmity. When we are in Christ, we pull down that dividing wall. You cannot be in Christ and have a wall of separation. Because the Bible says, He himself is our peace. He himself broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. He himself reconciled them in one body to God through the cross. One nation under God must become our reality. One nation, not of any kind of belief, but one nation under faith in God. This is not a secular nation. This is a Christian nation founded on Christian faith. Belief. And it must be It must continue in pursuit of Christian values. All men are born equal because all men are created in the image of God. Everyone must come to the table, including the original owners of the land, the people who came to push them out into the reservations and the people that were brought across the seas in slavery. Everybody must come to the table. Everyone must receive dignity, honor, and respect. This is where we start from. We start from having a full discourse Of reconciliation. How do we build? I love building. Anytime I see a broken down house, I get excited. I'm already imagining what can be done to this house. Most of the time when I see a, 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 a place that is broken, I'm thinking of a church. I'm a pastor, so. But I'm, when I see a building, I'm imagining what can this building be used for. When I see old buildings, I love them. They have character. And I'm thinking, what else can be done here? How do we build? Who wants to begin to build America with care? Do you love America? Do you love America? If you do, let's build her with care. Let's allow everyone to play their role with diligence and truth and godly fear. Let's build her back up. Let's build the nation God wants us to build. A nation like no other. A glorious nation. A beautiful nation. A powerful nation, a truthful nation, a nation of truth and justice, a righteous nation, not a nation that is built on lies and hypocrisy. 
Let's go back to the drawing board. Don't let this nation scatter in our time. And as I talk about America, I'm talking about every other nation in the world. I'm talking to African nations. I'm talking to Nigeria. I'm talking to South Africa. I'm talking to Zimbabwe. I'm talking to Ghana. I'm talking to all other nations in the world. Let us build with gold. How do we build? We build with diligence and truth and godly fear. Paul said, according to the grace of God which was given to me, like a wise master builder, he said, I laid a foundation and another is building on it. But let each man be careful how he builds. Paul said, I'm a master builder. I'm a master builder. He said, like a wise builder, I have laid a foundation. Others are building. Let each man be careful how he builds. We have a declaration of independence in America. Let every succeeding generation be careful how they build. Why do you care? Why should you care? <laughs> We should care because God does not suffer from amnesia. A 24 7 record is being kept of not just our actions, but our inmost undisclosed motives. <laughs> the Lord said, I, the Lord, I search the heart, I test the mind, I give to every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. Every man. God says, I search the heart. How are you building? Are you building for political expediency? Are you building for personal fame and wealth? If you are in government, if you are in the judiciary, if you are in the legislature, if you are in industry, wherever you are, what are you building for? Are you building for yourself? Are you building for another human being? And every time you build for another human being, it's usually because of your own selfish motives. Because you want a cut from what is coming from that person. But when you build for God, when you build for God, when you build for God, your reward comes from heaven. Let's build America with gold for God. Build America with gold for God. Build America with gold for God. Because the Lord, he searches the heart, he tests the mind. He will give everyone according to his ways. If you build America with gold for God, God will give back to you. So what? Because judgment is going to come. There will be consequences. Everyone will give an account of the opportunities and resources and gifts God has given them. Known, unknown, undiscovered, frittered away, hoarded on such, whatever God has given to you, whether you know or you do not know, whether you discovered or you did not discover, you are going to give an account. Every man shall give account of himself, not to your political party, not to the person who hired you, but to God. Be careful. Be very careful. Be very, very careful. There are consequences. You will give an account. Everyone will give an account of themselves to God.
as I begin to look to close. I want us to turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 24. Every time God puts you in a position of authority, you are the president. You are on the you are on the bench or, or you are on the supreme you are in the supreme court. You are in the federal court of appeal. You are you are you you, you are a judge. You are a member of the legislature. You are a member of you, you, you are in the you are in the, the, the you, you are a member you are a police uh, officer. You are an army officer. You are a teacher. You are a doctor. You serve in the grocery store. You are a supervisor. Remember, every time God gives you a position of authority and you have people under you, let me read a story for you from Matthew chapter 24. Starting from verse 47. The Lord says, Be sure a servant who is always faithful will be put in charge of what his master owns. A servant who is faithful will be put in a position of leadership. But getting into leadership is not the end of it. But suppose one of the servants thinks his master will not return until, until late. Suppose this evil servant starts beating the other servants and eats and drinks with people who are drunk. If that happens, the master will surely come on a day and at a time when the servant least expects him. The servant will then be punished and be thrown out with the ones who pretended to serve their master. They will cry and grit their teeth in pain. If you are faithful, you will be put in leadership. But if you think, my master isn't coming right away, and you begin to beat the other servants, you begin to oppress the other servants, you begin to maltreat the other servants. <laughs> the Lord Jesus said, the master will surely come. Let every master, let everyone in authority be careful because you have a master too. In conclusion, let's be careful how we build. Our constitution is not cast in stone. That's why we have so many amendments to it. It continues to evolve. If we like, we can cast down what has already been built and begin to build with straw. But I hope that today we will raise walls of righteousness, walls of justice, build on a foundation that is Jesus a godly foundation, a righteous foundation, so that we can build a society that is godly, that is righteous, that is prosperous, that is healthy, a blessed society. Why will COVID ravage us the way it's ravaging us? Sickness comes with sin. That's why we are so sick in this nation. We want to build a healthy nation. Israel was in the wilderness for 40 years. They were not sick. No doctor's office. The same God has not changed. If America turns back to righteousness, we will be healthy. Our land will be blessed. It will no longer be cursed. It will not continue to produce food that does not give us the necessary nutrients. We eat. We try to eat healthy. And we have to take a thousand and one other supplements because the ground is cursed. And it's not giving us the nutrients. 
Because we are producing food in unrighteousness. We are making people walk in sick environments. Slaughtering animals for us. Getting sick as they do that work. And not caring about them. Having COVID ravage them in the places where they are packing the food. In the places where they are processing the food. And we don't care about them. America. Let's build for God and let's build with gold. Let every man be treated equal. Because God created everyone in his own image. Male and female, he created them. He didn't create anything in between. It's male and female. The Bible says, and the man went into his wife and they had children. Man goes into a woman, they have children. Men don't go into men. Women don't go into women to have children. The man went into a woman and she was with child. And they shall have dominion over the plants, over the birds, over the animals, over the fish. Dominion over everything God created except a fellow human being. God did not create you to have dominion over another human being. You have dominion over every other thing. But you do not have dominion over any other human being. You do not have the right or the power to take somebody else's life. Including the life in the womb. Because life is from God. We are not Democrats. We are not Republicans. We are not from the left or the right. Because both of them have issues. They have their own agendas. And their agenda is not of God. Forget whatever they tell us. Let's pursue God's agenda. As we continue to build. Let's build this foundation with the word of God. The constitution continues to evolve. May God have mercy on us all. As long as earth remains, seed time and harvest will not cease. It is a principle and it is cast in stone. Those who resist will be crushed to powder. Those who believe will eat the fruit of it. Those who are sown in this nation have the right to partake of the goodness of it. It's time to stop discrimination. It's time to stop the hypocrisy. It's time to, to, it's time to stop hiding behind my constitutional right. Let's stand on the fundamental human rights that God has given to each human being. That is over and above every nation's constitution. It's the constitution of God first. The right to live. The right not to be discriminated against. America. Build with gold. You're under the sound of my voice today. It's not just about America. It's about you. It's about you as a person. What are you building with? Are you building on the righteousness and the truth of Christ Jesus? If you are way out in your sin, you've done all kinds of things. Like Paul. Paul said, I was insolent. I, I blasphemed God. He said, but the grace of God touched me. The grace of God is here today. Jesus died for your sin. If you will confess your sins, if you will turn to him today and say, Jesus I want you to become my Lord and Savior. If you will confess your sin, the grace of God will come to you. We are going to pray. Heads bowed, eyes closed.
wherever you are, turn to the Lord. I want you to talk to him. I want you to talk to him right now. Ask him, Father, I am sorry for those who have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Go ahead and repent. Tell him, I want you to become my Lord and Savior. I want to live my life of sin. The psalmist said, I'm a sinner from my mother's womb. All of us who are sinners from our mother's womb. But we can turn around today and give our lives to Jesus. Jesus is the only way. He's the only way. He's the only way to eternal life. Not your good works. So go ahead and confess your sins to the Lord now. And I will pray with you. If you are there and you are saying, I want to build with gold. There is no life that can be built with gold if that life does not have Jesus in it. Jesus is the only material that does not rust. If you want to surrender your life, just go ahead. I want to pray with you. And if you look on the screen, you want to get in touch with us because we want to know that you have given your life. We want to know that you have given your life. You can just text salvation. Just text salvation to that number on the screen. To the number on the screen, just text salvation. And we will respond to you. So Father, I pray for that soul. That person coming to you and saying, I'm repenting of my sins. I ask, oh God of heaven, Right now that as they confess their sins, you will forgive them. I pray, Lord, you will become the Lord of their life as they ask you into their hearts. You will take away their sin. You will give them your joy. You will give them your peace. You will make them your own from this moment, oh God. You will write their name in the register of life in heaven. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And if you are a backslider, you want to come back to the Lord, just go ahead. And to that same number, you can text rededication. You want to rededicate your life back to the Lord. You want to dedicate your life back to the Lord. As you confess your sins, the Lord forgives you right now. We want to pray for our nation now. It's the celebration of America's independence. But I want us to pray that this country will experience a new birth. A new birth. A new birth into righteousness. Go ahead. Let's pray for our nation. Any nation that is watching me all over the world, pray for your nation. That your nation, wherever your nation may be, will be built with gold. In the fear of God. Pray for your nation. Lord, we pray for all the nations of the world. As your children lift up their voices in their various nations, we ask, Lord, that you will raise up people who will build. Who will build with gold for you. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for America. I pray, oh God of heaven, that America will turn to you in righteousness and truth. And she will begin to build with gold. Have mercy on her, O oh God. Have mercy. Forgive all the sins of this nation. And Lord, let her have a brand new beginning. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. The word is already working in you. We hope you were blessed by this message. 
For more messages and information about the church, please visit us at www.rccglivingspring.org.